Kaimabon is a place where people come and spend a few days, usually a minimum of a weekend, sometimes as long as a week, and they have what is generally called a retreat. It's mainly about personal development, and we're at the foot of Arwidba. We're right at the foot of this, the, what I consider the sacred mountain in these islands. Not far away also is, is Morn Anglesey, which is the ancient sort of holy island of the Druids. My name is Eric, Eric Madden. I'm the driving force behind this place, Kaimabon. I was the one that started it, and I'm still here 37 years on. I stumbled upon this place, fell in love with it. It was for sale, but realized I couldn't afford to buy it. I had to let go of it. I was left with a really strong vision of what I could do here. It was as if it bubbled up out of the ground. So I came back to discover that someone had bought it. I had one day to look again. I came back up when I went into the last shop. I whizzed around. I was about to walk out the door and the manager said, what are you looking for? And I said, well, it doesn't matter. I've got enough. But he said, well, we've got this place, this place and this place. And um, I looked at the third place and it was this place. And it had come up for sale again, literally a few days before. I was filled with doubt as one is before making a big decision. But that night I went to a friend's house. Someone brought a song, and so I'll sing it for you now. It goes like this. Sleep, sleep tonight, and may your dreams be realized. But when the thundercloud passes rain, oh, let it rain, rain down on me. And after I'd sung that over and over again, it didn't matter about the rain because it was about dreams being realized. So the next day I went and signed the contract with a clear heart. And then the following day I ran into a friend, told him what I'd done and he said, you know what it was yesterday? I said, no, Midsummer's Day. I had unwittingly signed the contract on Midsummer's Day. I didn't know about those things back then. I was born in Australia, came over to Britain. And when I went into the school there, one of my teachers, seeing perhaps a sort of a tanned and tussled wild boy with an Aussie twang, nicknamed me Abbo. And so it became my nickname from the age of 11 to 19 for eight years. And somehow that went into the making of me. What does it mean? What does this Abbo thing mean? It's, well, of course, Aboriginal means from the beginning. So it's about, it's about origins, it's about firsts, it's primal, it's primitive, it's, it's early, it's, it's native, it's indigenous. This roundhouse is based on the kind of dwelling that people used to live in, especially around here, for 3,000 years before the Romans came. If you like, it was perhaps the kind of part of, at least, the, 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 my quest for Aboriginality resulted in the building of this roundhouse. That wonderful word hearth, which has got ear and art in it, it's got here and heart in it, it's got earth and it's got hearth in it. So it's, it's like a, a very rich, a word rich with resonances, you know. And, and, uh, so there we are, the hearth is at the centre of it all.